Hi students, welcome to lesson number 40, Symbolic Interactionist Perspective, Part A. Introduction Symbolic interactionism grew out of the American philosophical tradition of pragmatism in late 19th century, especially as elaborated by William James, John Dewey and Charles S. Pierce. The most important link between the pragmatic tradition and sociology was George Herbert Mead. One of his most famous books, Mind, Self and Society, published in 1934, is often taken as a charter for symbolic interactionist approach. Along with Mead, two other important early sociologists who shaped the interactionist tradition were Charles Horton Cooley and William Isaac Thomas. The most influential contributor to symbolic interactionist tradition was Herbert Blumer, who coined the term in 1937. Symbols are culturally derived social objects having shared meanings that are created and maintained in social interaction. Language and communication are symbols which provide the means by which reality is constructed. Reality is primarily a social product. The concepts of self, mind, society, culture emerges from and is dependent on interactions for its existence. Objectives after completion of this lesson, you will be able to understand the symbolic interaction perspective, the contributions of Herbert Blumer and George Herbert Mead, the contributions of Charles Horton Cooley and Sigmund Freud. <music> symbolic interactionism. The importance of symbols to the development of humans both as individuals and collectives is focus of symbolic interaction theory. Symbolic interactionism is essentially about how the presence of symbols is fundamental to the existence of societies, self-concepts and minds. Symbolic interactionism is a micro level theoretical perspective in sociology which tries to understand how individuals create and maintain society through face to face repeated meaningful interactions. Along with symbols, meaning and interaction, the self is a basic concept in symbolic interactionism. The essential feature of the self is that it is a reflexive phenomenon. Reflexivity enables humans to act toward themselves as objects or to reflect on themselves, argue with themselves, evaluate themselves and so forth. The usage of language and the ability to role take enables individuals to see themselves from the perspective of another and thereby to form a conception of themselves, a self-concept. Along with Max Weber, the American social behaviorist George Herbert Mead is credited as laying the foundations for a general approach to sociology called interactionism. Symbolic interactionism focuses on how meanings are constructed and transmitted across the members of society. G. H. Mead argued that the individual self is a social self produced in the process of interaction rather than being biologically given. Mead's theory traces the emergence and development of the self through a series of stages in childhood and his ideas on the social self underpins much interactionist research. Symbolic interactionism was coined by Herbert Blumer in 1969, one of the Mead students. The basic tenets of symbolic interactionism state that first, individuals act based on meanings objects have for them. 
Second, interaction occurs within a particular social and cultural context in which physical and social objects or persons as well as situations must be defined or categorized based on individual meanings. Third, meanings emerge from interactions with other individuals and with society. Fourth, Meanings are continuously created and recreated through interpreting processes during interaction with others. The interpretive process involves what Bloomer refers to as role taking, the cognitive ability to take the perspective of another. It is a critical process in communication. It enables actors to interpret one another's responses thereby bringing about greater consensus on the meanings of the symbols used. The determination of meanings also depends on negotiation, mutual adjustments and accommodations of those who are interacting. The concept of meaning is very important in symbolic interactionism. Herbert Blumer. Herbert Blumer was a student of George Herbert Mead and later a professor at University of Chicago who continued and developed the ideas of Mead. Blumer's ideas were important in the development of sociology in North America, countering the dominant approach of Talcott Parsons and playing a major part in developing the symbolic interaction perspective as a major school of sociological thought. He defines symbolic interaction as follows. The term symbolic interaction refers, of course, to the peculiar and distinctive character of interaction as it takes place between human beings. The peculiarity consists in the fact that human beings interpret or define each other's actions instead of merely reacting to each other's actions. Their response is not made directly to the actions of one another, but instead is based on the meaning which they attach to such actions. Thus, human interaction is mediated by the use of symbols, by interpretation or by determining the meaning of one another's actions. This mediation is equivalent to inserting a process of interpretation between stimulus and response in the case of human behavior. According to Blumer, the characteristics of this approach are human interaction, interpretation or definition rather than mere reaction, response based on meaning, use of symbols, interpretation between stimulus and response. Blumer proposed an interpretive model for sociology which inserts a middle term into the stimulus response couplet so that it becomes stimulus interpretation response. This can be understood as stimulus interpretation response for the symbolic interaction perspective. Acting people are the basic units of human society. Blumer's view of human society is that it consists of acting units and acting people and all activity in society emerges from such acting units. These acting units imagine taking on the role of others using interpretation and considering meaning in action. For Blumer, society is patterns of joint action and interaction where participants take account of each other. The content of social encounters in different situations and context is different in that there is communication within the self and between selves with selecting, checking, suspending, regrouping and transforming meanings 
in terms of the social context and the individual's intentions and interests. Bloomer's approach has three premises or assumptions. Firstly, human beings act toward things on the basis of the meanings that things have for them. Human consciousness, the ability of humans to indicate something to themselves about their surroundings leads to the possibility of meaning. Individuals in any situation are surrounded by many characteristics of their environment, but certain of these are meaningful. Bloomer terms this indicating something by taking things from the setting indications such as a knock at a door or the appearance of a friend. The things extracted from the setting like gestures, sounds, material things or what symbolic interaction is called symbols. The individual takes note of this, has an understanding of them, notes them to him or her and makes decisions concerning how to proceed. That is, the individual interprets these things as meaningful symbols and uses the symbols in action. Secondly, the meaning of things arises out of the social interaction one has with others. Things do not have inherent meaning. They are socially created through experience with other individuals and group interaction in society. Gestures and practices from other cultures such as religious or patriotic symbols and rituals have no meaning for those not familiar with them. But practices, symbols and gestures of the type frequently experienced generally have meaning for the individual. Thirdly, the meanings of things are handled and modified through an interpretive process used by the person in dealing with things he encounters. The symbolic interaction perspective considers meaning to be much flexible. That is, through interaction with others, the individual understands the common meaning associated with the symbols but may modify and changes this in a flexible way. The same symbol may have different meanings in different settings for different individuals and depending on how individual interprets the setting. Particular words and phrases may be appropriate in one circumstance and not in another. For example, calling people by their first name may be a problem in formal settings. Bloomer noted that the meanings are a result of a dialogue with oneself. That is, when responding in a particular way to a symbol, the individual notes the symbol and however quickly or unconsciously develops a particular response. This stage of interpretation between stimulus and response involves some dialogue with oneself considering what was meant by the symbol, what one wants to portray in a response, how the other person will understand and interpret the response and what is the most appropriate response in the circumstance. Bloomer emphasized how the self emerges from an interactive process of joint action. Bloomer's symbolic interactionism centers on processes actors use to constantly create and recreate experiences from one interaction to the next. For Bloomer, symbolic interactionism was simply the peculiar and distinctive character of interaction as it takes place between human beings. George Herbert Mead George Herbert Mead was an American philosopher, sociologist and psychologist. In Mead's view, 
human thought, experience and conduct are essentially social. They owe their nature to the fact that human beings interact in terms of symbols, the most important of which is language. A symbol defines object or event in a particular way and indicates a response to them. Without symbols, there would be no human interaction. Symbolic interactionism is necessary since man has no instincts to direct his behavior. He is not genetically programmed to react automatically to particular stimuli. In order to survive, he must therefore construct and live within a world of meaning. Thus, symbols provide the means whereby man can interact meaningfully with his natural and social environment. Social life can proceed only if the meanings of symbols are largely shared by members of society. In absence of this meaningful communication is impossible. In order for interaction to proceed, each person involved must interpret the meanings and intentions of others. This is made possible by the existence of common symbols, but actually accomplished by means of a process called as role taking. This process involves the individual taking on the role of another by imaginatively placing himself in the position of the person with whom he is interacting. On the basis of this interpretation, he will make his response to the action of the other. Mead argues that through the process of role taking, the individual develops a concept of self. Mead claims that the idea of self can only develop if the individual can see himself externally in such a way as to become an object to himself. To do this, he must observe himself from the standpoint of others. Therefore, the origin and development of a concept of self lies in the ability to take the role of another. The notion of self is not inborn, it is learned during childhood. Thus, the process of socialization becomes extremely important. Mead sees two main stages in the development of self, play stage. It involves the child playing roles which are not his own. During play, individuals take on the roles of other people and pretend to be those other people in order to express the expectations of significant others. The child plays the role of significant others like mother or father. In doing so, he becomes aware that there is a difference between him and the role that he is playing. Game stage. In playing a game, the child comes to see himself from the perspective of various other participants. In order to play a game, the child must become aware of his relationship to other players. He must place himself in their roles in order to appreciate his particular role in the game. In doing so, he sees himself in terms of the collective viewpoint of the other players. In Mead's terminology, he sees himself from the perspective of the generalized other. The game stage yields one of Mead's best known concepts, the generalized other. The generalized other reflects the attitude of the entire community. The ability to take the role of the generalized other is essential to the self only in so far as he takes the attitude of the organized social group to which he belongs toward the organized cooperative social activity or set of such activities in which that group is engaged 
does he develop a complete self the generalized other also represents meets inclination to give priority to the social because it is through the generalized other that the group influences the behavior of individuals mead also looks at the self from a realistic point of view at the individual level the self allows the individual to be a more efficient member of the larger society because of the self people are more likely to do what is expected of them in a given situation because people often try to live up to group expectations they are more likely to avoid the inefficiencies that come from failing to do what the group expects furthermore the self allows for greater coordination in society as a whole because individuals can be counted on to do what is expected of them the group can operate more effectively the importance of symbols to the development of humans both as individuals and collective is focus of symbolic interaction theory symbolic interactionism is essentially about how the presence of symbols is fundamental to the existence of societies our self concepts and our minds symbolic interactionism was coined by herbert bloomer one of the mead students bloomer's theoretical orientation toward symbolic interactionism can be summarized through three premises first human beings act towards things on the basis of the meanings that the things have for them second the meaning of things is derived from or arises out of the social interaction that one has with others third meanings are handled in and modified through an interpretive process used by a person in dealing with the things they encounter mead argues that through the process of role taking the individual develops a concept of self by placing himself in the position of others he is able to look back upon himself mead identifies two aspects or phases of the self which he labels the i and the me the me represents the expectations and attitudes of others that is the generalized other it is the organized set of attitudes of others that the individual assumes the i is the response to the me or the person's individuality 